Hey. <laughs> uh, welcome to another episode. Um, so in the previous one, you saw us make some deep fried tacos at Cafe Racer in Strand. Today, however, I am on my way to see the guys from Santa Ana who actually produce these corn chips and tacos, and tortillas and so forth. And uh, I'm on my way to their test kitchen in Gordons Bay where they will show us how it's done. Yes, this is a pumpkin. <laughs> so today they're going to take us through the production facility from where they get their corn, yeah. the cooking process, to the point where they actually form and make a very delicious corn chip. And Pete from Santa Anos. Thanks, guys. That was great. Lucky. Okay. Good to see you, Alex, man. Yo, yo, it's been a while, dude. Been a while, crocodile. <laughs> so we basically started Santa Anos because we couldn't find any decent uh, corn tortillas um, in, in supply in South Africa. So we started making it ourselves. Um, initially, by buying small amounts of corn and going through the whole process and sort of basically teaching ourselves off uh, YouTube videos and online sort of uh, platforms how to go through the whole process. Basically what it means is it means to cook corn with, a, with sort of an alkaline solution. Uh, back in the day they used to use wood ash or ground up mussel shells. Nowadays we use uh, ground up limestone basically in the form of calcium hydroxide. Huh? Exactly. So you cook the corn in a solution of wood and calcium hydroxide for uh, varying degrees of time, um, depending on the cultivar and the batch, but normally it's about 20 minutes, um, after which you cool down the corn and then soak it for about 24 hours before you grind it. Um, what the uh, alkali solution does is it, uh, it dissolves the outer hull of the corn, so the bran, um, and it hydrates all of the uh, carbohydrates in the outside of the corn. It extracts a little bit of the pectin that's naturally bioavailable in corn, um, which then makes the end product malleable. So once this process has been done, it's called nistamol, um, which we then wash. After the corn's been washed, it gets ground in a stone grinder. The stone grinder. Gr yeah, exactly. <laughs> Canic rock is nice and porous and it, uh, it, it, it grinds up the corn into sort of a rough, rough, a bit of a rougher texture. So you're getting the whole kernel, uh, we don't take anything away. So with processed uh, versions of this, you lose the endosperm, which is pretty much where most of the nutrients lie. Um, from there, it uh, gets mixed in a mixer um, with a little bit of salt and we add a little bit of extra calcium hydroxide in at the end just to extend the shelf life a little bit. Um, and from there, it goes through our tortilla machine that we imported from Mexico. Um, this basically shapes the tortillas and it, uh, it bakes them as well. So at the end of that, comes out as a fully usable tortilla, which we then either package and, and sell as tortillas or we turn into corn chips. Yeah, so it all started back in 2013. Mm. There, there, there are a few markets back then, and like Pete mentioned just now, it was, we started in small batches. <laughs> <laughs> we bought about 5 to 10 cages of corn at a stage and uh, did it all by hand and made about 400 to 450 tortillas uh, a day. We're at the moment we're doing um, 700 to 800 an hour through the machine. Yeah. So yeah, it's been a massive leap and uh, this year coming up now, we're looking at uh, getting about 120 tons of, of corn. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a lucky growing process. Yeah, from, from two kilos a day to two and a half tons a week. So <laughs> that's quite lucky. Um, but there's a, there's a cool market out there for, for, for ethical food these days, sustainable food. Um, all our cro corn's grown in Priska by Bart Kutsia and his wife Alette on Leverland. Um, and we've been working, the, working this sort of process with them for the last three years to uh, get the corn certified organic, which, which is, now has been done. 
Um, we also do something different to most other chip companies. We batch fry, which is sort of pretty much what they call kettle fry. Um, it keeps the oil temperature high enough to really get a crisp end product every time. Um, and we use coconut oil to fry our chips in. Um, there's various reasons for that, mostly uh, texture, flavor, and also um, it's a healthier oil when you're using a high temperature, so it doesn't denature as fast as any normal vegetable oil would. It creates less free radicals in the frying process. So as Pete mentioned earlier, we've got the tortillas, which are called tortillas, we sell them in a packet of 10, and then we've got the little small snack pack, corn chips, 80 gram, they've got the Big boy, 250 gram for those eggs, keen on making some nachos. But no, we don't do any flavors. We just add salt to the mixer. All of the flavoring you do yourself at home. Do it a little salsa, guacamole, anything like that. Really, really like the other way forward. Chip and dip pops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. The guys are going to take us to the kitchen and we're going to go and make a taco. What are we going to make, boys? Uh, we're gonna make some form of a taco. We we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna yeah. see. Okay. We'll see what we got a lot. All right. Quiere bailar el mariachi loco. Quiere bailar el mariachi loco.